So what are the most dangerous species of tarantula? We'll keep watching to find out. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoy videos like this, as well as all things tarantula related, be sure you hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn on notifications by clicking that bell so you'll be alerted anytime I upload a new video. Now today we're gonna to be talking about the top 10 most dangerous species of tarantula. I think it's important to point out that I did not title this the top 10 deadliest species because no tarantula species is actually deadly to humans. Occasionally you may find a report here and there that's been exaggerated or it involves a small child like a baby or somebody that's very old or has a specific allergy or some other kind of illness and the bite from the tarantula was a part of what led to their death. But in general, if a healthy human receives a bite from a tarantula, it is not life-threatening. Now at the time of this video, the scientific community has not spent a lot of time researching the venom of tarantulas. There's very little to no information out there about the effects of tarantula venom on the human body. It's just one of those areas that the scientific research community hasn't really covered yet. Though they are starting to research the medicinal benefits of some tarantula venom, whether it's treating cancer or a wide variety of other illnesses or issues with the human body. But a definitive species by species list of the toxicity of a tarantula's venom is just not available. With that in mind, I approached making this top 10 list a little differently. First, I went through all these different bite reports on arachnoboards and other websites. I used my own personal experience of years worth of dealing with different tarantula species, as well as reaching out to the community through my Facebook group, Twitter, Instagram, and here on YouTube. I tried to get a lot of different personal experience from many different users and figure out exactly which species they thought were the most dangerous. So having compiled all that information, I created this list to share with you. I also wanna point out that this is not the top 10 most aggressive species, because in my experience, tarantulas really aren't aggressive. A lot of times what people perceive as aggression is actually just them being defensive. The majority of the reports that I've read and were told about happened when someone was rehousing a tarantula or feeding them or maintaining their enclosure. And I think one thing as tarantula keepers sometimes we fail to recognize is that the enclosure itself becomes the tarantula's den. Maybe we think that just its cocoon web or the burrow that it dug is its home. But for a tarantula, the entire enclosure really is its safe place. I mean, could you imagine if you're just sitting on your couch at home, relaxing, watching some TV, and this huge hand out of nowhere comes and rips the roof off of your house and starts throwing cheeseburgers at you and then moving around your furniture. I mean, you get pretty defensive too. So I try to keep that type of mindset anytime I'm interacting with my tarantula. They don't understand who I am. They don't understand what I'm doing. I'm just gonna be perceived as a threat that they wanna get away from. And 90% of the time, if the tarantula has somewhere to retreat to and hide, it's gonna take that option. But occasionally, if they don't feel they can retreat safely, they may stand their ground and give you a threat pose or slap the ground or even try to bite you. So these are the tarantulas that in my opinion are the most dangerous in that particular situation. Now generally, tarantulas are divided into two different groups. You have your New World tarantulas, which come from the Western Hemisphere, places like North America, Central and South America. Then you have your Old World tarantulas, which come from the Western Hemisphere, places like Thailand, Australia, Africa, India, the Philippines. Now the majority of your New World tarantulas don't have what's considered medically significant venom. Their main go-to when it comes to defense is kicking the urticating hairs. The majority of New World tarantulas have urticating hairs that they kick from their abdomen into a cloud in the air. When those hairs get on your skin, they harpoon themselves in there and they really start to itch and blister and sometimes can even be a little painful. This is a great defense mechanism when a tarantula is trying to escape a predator, especially a mammal. When those hairs get in the nose, mouth, and eyes, it really shuts down their attack. Now your old world tarantulas, on the other hand, don't possess the urticating hairs. So they rely mainly on their speed and their potent venom. So these tarantulas have what is considered medically significant venom. Being envenomated by an old world tarantula dependent on the species can cause severe pain that can last for days, muscle cramps, joint aches, nausea, swelling, redness, blisters, the list goes on. And in some cases, people feel as if they need to be hospitalized after a bite from an old world tarantula due to the racing heart and the severe pain and nausea and all the side effects that come along with it. Now, while the effects of a new world tarantula's venom may only last a few hours, the effects of a lot of old world species can last for days or even weeks. 
Now the number 10 most dangerous tarantula, in my opinion, is actually a new world tarantula. Now this species comes from Mexico and is from a genus that is fairly docile. But pretty much anyone that has this species in their collection knows what an aggressive feeding response it can have. Not only is it prone to kick hairs, which can be very irritating, this species will very frequently give you a threat pose, slap the ground, and I even found some bite reports on arachno boards where people were bitten feeding, rehousing, or just unpacking a tarantula they received in the mail. As spiderlings and juveniles, they aren't really that dangerous, but once they become full-grown adults, they're very fast, they're very large, they've got some pretty big fangs that in and of itself may really hurt, but their venom can have some effects you may not be ready for. Now I'm talking about the Brachypelma vogans. A lot of people refer to this as the evil Brachypelma, but this is the Mexican red rum tarantula. People were reporting that there was swelling around the area of the bite, numbness in their fingers and hands, some pain, itching, and these effects lasted for well over four hours. Some even reporting pain and numbness the next day or two. The area around the bite, especially if it was on a finger, swelled up pretty well. So this is definitely not a tarantula you wanna get bit by. Now the number nine tarantula is another new world terrestrial tea. This is one of the largest new world terrestrials out there. And in my experience, no matter which species in this genus I am feeding or rehousing, they are very prone to kick hairs very fast and love to show you a threat pose if you startle them. Now this species has one of the most aggressive feeding responses of any tarantula in my collection. This is one of the few species that I flinch sometimes because they shoot out of their burrows so fast and a lot of times they'll miss the worm or the cricket that I'm trying to feed them and will attack the tongs. On more than one instance, they've even started to come up the tongs and I've had to drop them in the enclosure. So the number nine tarantula is the Pamphibetus vespertinus or the platyoma. This is a very large new world tarantula and their venom can pack a bit of a punch. A lot of people online reported numbness and pain along with swelling for days after a bite. Being bit on the finger sometimes led to numbness all the way up to the shoulder. I still wouldn't say their venom is medically significant, but apparently Apparently it does pack a little bit more of a punch than your basic New World species. But the venom is not the reason I put this at number nine on the list. They made a list because of their aggressive feeding response, their speed, and their bravery. Now if I don't bother the tarantula, I have no worry of it trying to attack me. But if I'm messing with its enclosure and moving things around, even something as simple as just filling the water, I have to be very mindful to know where the tarantula is and how to retreat if it does feel threatened and gives some defensive behaviors. Now the number eight most dangerous tarantula is actually gonna be two different species of the same genus. After going through a lot of bite reports and hearing a lot of people's experience, both of these names kept coming up over and over again, so I figured I'd give them both a slot. Now this is a new world arboreal tarantula that's known for being so fast, people say it teleports. They are a gorgeous species with very striking colors and being a new world tarantula, it's very tempting for beginners in the hobby to gravitate towards getting one of these tarantulas. You'll hear a lot of people recommend both of these species as a good transition tarantula when you're moving from keeping new world tarantulas to old world tarantulas. Of course, I'm talking about the Salmopius erminia or Cambrigi. Now, in my personal experience, I've never received a threat pose from either of these tarantulas, but I have witnessed exactly how fast they can move. That in and of itself is very intimidating. Now, a lot of people have reported that a bite from this tarantula is probably the most painful of any New World tarantula, which leads a lot of people to believe the Salmopius genus has the most potent venom of all New World tarantulas. I'm not sure scientifically if that's correct, but that seems to be the general consensus at the moment. Now the number seven most dangerous tarantula on my list is an old world fossorial tea. This means the tarantula spends the majority of its time burrowed underground. Now this probably applies to almost all of the species in this genus, but this tarantula is rumored to have a pretty powerful bite. They don't possess the urticating hairs of the new world tarantulas. They're extremely fast, but if you threaten them while they're inside of their burrow, they may feel they have no other option for defense than giving you a threat pose or trying to bite. In my experience, this species in particular has been very defensive. The other species in this genus that I have in my collection, I haven't had much issue anytime I've been rehousing or feeding them. But this one in particular will run out of its burrow onto its web as soon as it feels any movement. It can be something as simple as me taking the lid off and that little bit of air movement hitting its web and causing it to shoot out of its burrow. 
Now mine has never slapped at me or even tried to run up the tongs, but I've heard some experience from a few other keepers out there that left me messages on my post telling me that theirs are extremely defensive. The tarantula I'm talking about is the Chilibrachis fimbriatus, or the Indian violet tarantula. This is a very colorful, beautiful tarantula with an amazing color pattern on its abdomen. But like most old world tarantulas, it does have medically significant venom. People have reported side effects ranging from fevers, chest pains, muscle aches, numbness, swelling, nausea, and extreme headaches. And this didn't just last for a few hours. We're talking three, four days down the road. It's a venom that sticks around for a while and goes through stages. But again, the venom is not the only reason this one made the list. It's because it's very quick, it's pretty defensive, and it's very risky rehousing this tarantula, being that it is a burrower. And the more you try to get them out, the deeper into that burrow they will go. This makes it very difficult when you're trying to rehouse it into a larger enclosure. So in my opinion, it's when you're rehousing this tarantula that you're at the most risk of getting bit. Now this next species is a tarantula I've had a lot of experience up close and personal with. A few weeks ago, I put out a Karen Husbandry video specifically about this species. While filming that video, I had the tarantula out of its enclosure, walking around on my table, taking photographs and video, and trying to keep it corralled on the table. I also rehoused that tarantula shortly after making that video. Now in my experience, I had no issues. The tarantula was fairly docile and at no time while making this video did that tarantula give me any defensive posturing. Now that being said, about a year ago this same tarantula was very wild. It would run laps around its enclosure, it would give me threat poses just for walking by. So the number six tarantula on this list is the Omothymus violicepes, formerly from the Lampra Pelma genus. This is the Singapore blue tarantula, which is an old world arboreal tea that has a leg span of nearly nine inches. This is a very large, very fast tarantula with medically significant venom. You will find out that a majority of the time, especially during the day, this tarantula will burrow down into the substrate where it feels safe and secure. Then at night when it's dark and things are a lot more quiet, it will venture out of that burrow and climb around its enclosure hunting for prey. So anytime I open up its enclosure to refill the water dish or do a little bit of maintenance, I spend an extra couple of minutes trying to determine exactly where that tarantula is. Sometimes it'll be down in its burrow where I can't see it. Other times it'll be hiding in the back of the cork bark or up inside the corner hidden by a plant. Before I put my hand in that enclosure or even open the door, I wanna know exactly where it is. If you go on arachnoboard or just do a basic Google search for this tarantula, you'll find more than a few bite reports. And these people have reported pain and numbness in their hand for days after the bite. Also severe muscle cramps, nausea, dizziness, headaches, racing heart, chest pains, high anxiety, and stiff joints. It does not sound like a pleasant experience at all. Now this next species is an old world terrestrial tarantula that will do a lot of burrowing when they're young and then as they get older, almost seem to be semi-arboreal. Many people suggested this should be the number one on the list, but this tarantula really holds a special place in my heart. I've had a few different specimens in this species and, and have really enjoyed keeping them. They're brightly colored, very fast, and can be very defensive. A lot of people are scared of it. There's a lot of pictures of it given a threat pose, but I think that has a lot more to do with the fact that it's so readily available in the hobby that a lot more people just have them in their collection to take pictures of them in the first place. Of course, I'm talking about the Tetranoculus murinus or the orange baboon tarantula, commonly known as the OBT here in the hobby. This species is notorious for being very fast, darting right out of its burrow and grabbing a cricket. Now there are some people that like to try and handle this species, or they'll take their tongs or a chopstick and try to agitate the tarantula to show off to their friends and see what an impressive threat posture it has. But this can be very dangerous as the venom is medically significant and they're probably a little quicker to bite than some other species. Side effects of their venom, again, include stiffness, swelling, pain in the extremities, nausea, dizziness, headache, and these can last for days on end. But nearly all of the reports that I've seen or heard about only happened because the tarantula was either being handled, provoked, or they were rehousing the tea. Like with any old world species, just be careful and mindful and give the tarantula their space. Now the number four tarantula on this list is a name that came up over and over again on every social media platform I pose this question. This is an old world arboreal tarantula that's notorious for being defensive. 
Not only that, but it probably has some of the most potent venom of all the Old World tarantulas. Again, this is another species that's fairly common in the hobby because they're easy to breed and very inexpensive. Some people even receive them as freebies when they place an order from an online tarantula dealer. In fact, I have three in my collection that I've never ordered. They just came as a freebie when I bought some other Old World tarantulas. This is a very unique looking species and definitely a jewel in anyone's collection though they can be fairly secretive. So the number four most dangerous species is going to be the Heteroscodra maculata, also known as the Toga starburst baboon or the ornamental baboon. This is definitely not a tarantula that you want to get as a beginner. You want to have some experience with arboreals, with old world tarantulas, and with very fast moving tarantulas before you add this species to your collection. This tarantula is known for being defensive. It is lightning fast and according to bite reports, has some of the most painful venom of all the old world tarantulas, with some people reporting the effects of this venom lasting for weeks. Along with chest pains, headaches, dizziness, people have also reported severe pain, numbness, stiff muscles, and aching joints. From the reports that I read, there was more than one occasion the person bit actually went to the emergency room, hoping to get some medication for pain management and to help reduce the fever associated with this venom. So always be careful when you're interacting with this species and don't ever attempt to handle. Now this next tarantula on the list is probably the species or the genus that makes me the most nervous. That's because on two separate occasions, this tarantula has bolted out of its enclosure towards me very unexpectedly and is prone to give me a threat pose and slap the ground anytime I disturb it. That being said, it's also a favorite genus of mine. Now this is an old world arboreal tarantula with some species of the genus growing a diagonal leg span of up to nine inches. Instead of just picking one species, I'm gonna include two species of the same genus here in the number three spot. And that's just because I've had close run-ins with both of these. So the number three most dangerous species is the Postolotheria ornata and the Postolotheria regalis. That's the fringed ornamental and the Indian ornamental tarantulas. Anyone with any experience with Postolotheria knows that they can be very fast and very stubborn but also that this behavior is almost predominantly defensive and is only exhibited anytime they feel threatened. Now the number two tarantula on my list is another Old World Arboreal. I currently have one of these in my collection, though I'm very rarely able to get a picture of it. But this is probably one of the most uniquely beautiful tarantulas I have. Not just because of the color or the pattern, but the hair of the tarantula is also extremely unique and unlike any of the other arboreals I have. I wish it wasn't as secretive as it is so I could get some cool video of it and hopefully one day I'll be able to make a Karen Husbandry video on this species. But when I reached out to a lot of my followers getting their opinion on the most dangerous tarantulas, this was one of the, if not the highest suggested species. So the number two most dangerous tarantula on my list today is the Stromatopelma calciatum, also known as the feather leg baboon. This old world Asian arboreal is very defensive if you disturb it. When I drop a cricket in its enclosure, it sometimes will snatch it before I even realize it. With lightning fast speeds and medically significant venom, you gotta be careful around this tea. After being bit by this species, people reported immediately feeling a burning sensation at the location of the bite, followed by severe swelling, numbness all the way up their arm, chest pains, tightness of the chest, difficulty breathing. Some people even experienced high fever, vomiting, muscle cramps in their legs, as well as stiff joints throughout their body. Now again, their venom is not life-threatening, but it is extremely painful. And based on all the reports I read online, it's definitely not a species I ever wanna be bitten by. I definitely wouldn't suggest this for beginners out there or even intermediates. But once you have years of experience dealing with fast arboreals and old world tarantulas with medically significant venom, then maybe consider adding this to your collection because it is a uniquely gorgeous tarantula. All right, well, that brings us to the number one most dangerous tarantula. If you've enjoyed this video so far, be sure you hit that like button. It means a lot to me, and it helps future keepers find this information further on down the line. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed and share this video with your friends on Facebook or Instagram or whatever social media you're on. If you want to stay up to date with what's going on with me and my tarantula collection in between these videos, then visit my website, thetarantulacollective.com. There you'll find links to my Instagram, Twitter, our subreddit, pretty much any 
social media I'm on, as well as a merchandise store filled with all kinds of Tarantula Collective hats and shirts and hoodies and you name it. And of course, you can always join me in the Tarantula Collective Facebook group where we've got almost 10,000 members now sharing all their experiences and photos and videos of tarantulas. And all members of the Facebook group get 10% off their purchases at Fear Not Tarantulas. Now this last tarantula is the one that always intimidates me. I have an adult female as well as a juvenile in my collection right now. And they just have a bad attitude. They're a gorgeous species, I love looking at them, but as beautiful as they are, you can almost see the mean streak in their eyes. Now this is an old world fossorial tarantula that comes from Myanmar and Thailand. It's very popular in the hobby due to its bright color and its extreme feeding response. But as its name suggests, this is a livid tarantula. So of course, for the number one tarantula, I'm talking about the Syriopagopus lividium, formerly known as the Haplopelma lividus, commonly known though as the cobalt blue tarantula. Even as a small spiderling, this tarantula had a mean streak. This tarantula is very fast and can bolt straight out of its enclosure before you would even have time to react. Now, I would never suggest handling this tarantula, though inevitably you will see pictures online of people doing just that. But I also don't think it's a good idea to wrestle alligators or handle venomous snakes or jump out of an airplane with a parachute. But seriously though, it's not worth the risk. People have ranked this venom based on their own experiences to be one of the most, if not the most painful venom out there. People have reported a spike in their temperature after a bite to nearly 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius. Along with the headaches and nausea, there have been extreme vomiting, severe muscle cramps, stiff and aching joints, pain to the point that they needed to go to a hospital to get pain medication, dizziness, vertigo, the list goes on. And the problem with being bit by a tarantula with medically significant venom is even if you go to the emergency room, there really isn't much a doctor can do for you. And the venom of this species can take days with side effects lasting even weeks or months down the road. So be very careful with this species. Even though it is a gorgeous tarantula, one that I have two of in my collection, I am extremely diligent to make sure that lid is always fastened, not just shut, but closed and locked down. And I take every single precaution that I know of. Like with many things in nature, the most beautiful are usually the most dangerous. So be sure that you have the experience and the knowledge before you get this tarantula and add it to your collection. Well, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this in the future, be sure you hit that like button so I know that I need to come up with more ideas similar to this one. If you enjoy the scientific aspects of tarantulas and you want to stay up to date on everything happening as far as research and things going on in the scientific community, which hopefully one day will include how tarantula venom exactly affects humans, then be sure to check out my friend Lewis Roke's podcast. It's called Prokelium Theraphosidae and I'll leave a link to it down below in the description so make sure you check that out. Well, this is the first video of 2020, so I hope all of you all had an awesome new year. And I will see you next Tuesday. Ha 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 ha!